Welcome everyone to this presentation of Getting Started with QuickBooks Online Global Edition or International Edition. I am Hector Garcia. I am an accountant based out of Miami, Florida, United States, but I work with business owners and QuickBooks users from all over the world. I'm an advanced certified QuickBooks Pro Advisor, very active on Twitter, and also have my own YouTube channel all about QuickBooks and accounting related topics, so check those out. Today's presentation is gonna be about an hour and 20 minutes. First, we're gonna do a quick introduction about QuickBooks Online Global or International Edition, so we'll explain exactly what that means. Then we'll get started with setting up a brand new company. Then we're gonna talk about the settings, changing the language, and changing the home currency and setting up multi-currency. Then we'll do some basic navigation so you can understand how to get around QuickBooks Online. Then we'll move on to setting up your chart of accounts, the heart of your accounting system. Then we'll talk about tracking sales, invoices, and customer-related accounts receivable. Then after, we'll talk about expenses, purchases, bills, and supplier accounts payables. Then we'll talk briefly about how to manage inventory, how does QuickBooks manage inventory, then we'll move into billable time and expenses, and we'll follow that with project profitability tracking. Then we'll talk about tracking sales tax and value-added tax. Then we'll talk about budgets and doing financial reports. And lastly, we'll talk about document attachments. QuickBooks Online Global Edition, which will be the subject of today's presentation, is a little bit different than the regional or country editions. Basically, if you're running a company in QuickBooks based out of USA, Canada, Mexico, Brazil, United Kingdom, France, South Africa, India, Singapore, or Australia, all of those will have their own country or regional editions. For the rest of the world, we're going to be working on the global or international edition of QuickBooks Online, which includes the rest of Europe, most of Central and South America, with the exception of Mexico and Brazil, most of Africa, with the exception of South Africa. Hong Kong will have its own local currency, but it will be working on the global edition or the international edition of QuickBooks Online. So that will be re relevant to Hong Kong and Malaysian users as well. And of course, the rest of Asia, except for India and Singapore, would qualify for this global or international edition of QuickBooks Online. Now, when you first set up a QuickBooks Online global account, you're gonna have three subscription options. The first most basic option would be QuickBooks Online Simple Start. That will give you access to banking, tracking income, tracking expenses, tracking your invoice or accounts receivable, basic sales tax and value added tax, and it's only for one user and one external accountant. If you wanna upgrade, to the mid version of QuickBooks Online, you're gonna to have to choose Essentials. Essentials has everything the Simple Start has, plus the ability to create quotes or estimates, the ability to track supplier bills or accounts payable, the ability to manage multiple currencies, the ability to create recurring transactions, and you can have up to three users instead of one user plus your external accountant working on QuickBooks Online. And the highest, most advanced version, it's QuickBooks Online Plus. QuickBooks Online Plus will have everything the Essentials version has, plus the ability to create purchase orders, track or manage inventory, the ability to track project costs or project profitability, the ability to do location and class tracking to add extra dimensions to your reporting, and the ability to have up to five users from the basic subscription, and you can actually upgrade all the way to 25 users paying an additional fee. So Simple Start, Essentials, and Plus will be your basic three options when you're setting up a new QuickBooks Online global account. Now, why QuickBooks Online? First, you can use QuickBooks Online on a browser and on a mobile app. So regardless of what device you have, you'll be able to access most of the functionality from this mobile device tons of reports and dashboards that you can customize and even automate, easy access to your accountant. So if you have an external accountant that you collaborate with, that person can log in 
without you having to transfer information back and forth. Because QuickBooks Online, it's online or on the cloud. It's all automatically backed up. There's no need for you to have special security backups of your data. It's all bank level security encryption. So rest assured that your information is safe. And finally, there's free unlimited support via chat and in some countries uh, via phone support as well. The mobile app is one really popular option to do most of the functionality. So if you wanna pull dashboard basic reports, create invoices, track your customers and the money they owe you, the mobile app is gonna be a great choice. But most of the functionality that we are gonna demo on this presentation will be the browser version. So let's get started. Let's set up a new company account for QuickBooks Online Global. So the first thing we do is we're gonna go into quickbooks.com or quickbooks.intuit.com. It should forward automatically to that site. Now, generally speaking, depending on where you're physically located, the version of QuickBooks that's appropriate to your country, to your location, will be defaulted on the screen. It might not be really obvious which version you're in. So what you can do to double check is you can go up to the URL and just add forward slash global and press enter. Once you do that, it should take you to the generic global edition of QuickBooks Online. And then you're gonna see a link somewhere on the page that will say choose country. Once you click on choose country and you will see all the countries available, you will click on that country and it will send you to the right version. For this particular example, we're gonna go ahead and pick uh, Panama, which is one of the countries in the global version of QuickBooks Online and Panama is based on the US dollar. So what we can do is we can do the entire example in US dollar for an international company. You can actually pick any home currency, but for this presentation, we'll be using US dollar throughout. Then somewhere in the page, you should see a button that says buy now or start your free trial. We're gonna go ahead and click on start free trial. And the next page should give you the three options, simple start, essentials, and plus. On this presentation, we're gonna be doing a demonstration on most of the features inside QuickBooks Online. So we're gonna pick plus, which has those additional features that we're gonna be doing a demonstration on. So you're gonna click somewhere where it says buy now or start free trial. After you enter your email, user information, and password, you're gonna click on the next button. And after answering a few questions, it will take you straight to the QuickBooks Online homepage. Let's move on to customizing account and settings, language, and home currency. So the first thing we're gonna do before we do any sort of navigation or setup, we're gonna click on the gear menu on the top right of the screen. It's an icon that looks like a little gear. And then we're gonna go down to account and settings. Once we click on account and settings, it's gonna take us to the screen where we can change all the settings of the company. For example, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click on company on the top left, click on where it says logo, select the logo you have saved in your computer somewhere, click on save, and that will upload the logo that's gonna be used on invoices and purchase forms. I can change the company name here where it says company name. I can have a different legal name if I want to, I'll click on the checkbox if there isn't one, and then put my value added tax or my local country tax number that's generally gonna be used on any sort of tax forms. Then we're gonna click on save. Then we're gonna go down to company type. We're gonna click on the little pencil to change the settings. We're gonna choose the type of company that we have. So let's say this is gonna be a corporation. And then the industry, let's call this one wholesale trade. Okay, you can search all sorts of different industries. It's good to have it so the general settings are made based on the industry. We click on save. At this point, we can change the email, website, phone number, address, all that information, and we can go over to the sales tab on the left-hand side. On the sales tab, we can click on customize look and feel to change the way the invoices look. We'll go back to that. We can change some of the default content on invoices, such as payment terms, whether or not we wanna see custom fields, shipping fields, discount fields, deposit fields. That's something you're gonna to have to explore based on your company needs. See if you're gonna need any of these things inside of the invoice. And you can look at 
all the other type of settings that are available there. Everything that can be customized or changed about QuickBooks Online is going to be in these settings. On their expenses, we can do a couple of things here. We can turn on purchase orders. So if we want to have purchase orders turned on, that's an option we can do in there. On the bills and expenses, we can click on track expenses or items by customer. So if we want to have project level uh, tracking or project level profitability, we would need to have that option turned on. Let's click on save. And then under advanced, it's a couple of really important things. So one, we can change the fiscal month that starts your fiscal year. So if you have a different fiscal year other than January to December, you want to make sure that you pick that. You also want to choose whether you're accrual or cash basis. Most countries internationally would be using accrual basis, but some countries will be using cash basis. In here, you can choose the default tax treatment, whether the transactions are inclusive of tax or exclusive of tax. You can also turn on and off classes and locations. If you want to have, track additional information or additional dimensions of data into your transactions, and you can also turn off and on project tracking. I'm going to turn it on so we can do a couple of examples of that, and then I'm going to click on save. But the two key settings we want to look at is the language and the home currency. So right here on the same advanced tab, under language, it will default to English. If I change this to Spanish, for example, and click on save, all the language will be uh, completely in Spanish. The entire accounting software will be in Spanish or whatever language uh, that you choose. So let me change that back to English and click on save. And then let's take a look at the multiple currencies. So we're going to go down to multiple currencies here. And by default, the home currency is US dollar. You can change the home currency to whatever you want based on your company and business needs. So you can change that at that point. Once you change home currency, it's a little bit complicated to change it afterwards. So you kind of have to make a, a decision on what is the functional currency you'll be using in QuickBooks Online, at least for all the reports. I'm going to go ahead and click on USD as my home currency. I'm also going to turn on multi-currency, which cannot be undone because let's say, for example, that I manage uh, money in multiple currencies. So I'll turn that on, click on the checkbox and hit save. So for this presentation, we'll be working on home currency, US dollar, but maybe we'll be doing some transactions in a foreign currency. Now in this exact area, there's a, a box or a link that says manage currencies. Once I click on that, I can pick which are the additional uh, multiple currencies I would like to use. So by default, a few might be added for you in there. You can click on add currency on the top right. We can choose, let's say Canadian dollar. So let's go down and check our Canadian dollar, click on add, and then you're going to see uh, live the exchange rate for each of them. Okay. In the right of the screen, you can change the currency manually by clicking on edit exchange rate. You can click on market rate, which will default whatever the current market rate is, or you can click on your rate and establish your own. I generally just like to allow QuickBooks to establish its own market rate. All right, let's move on to basic navigation. So regardless where you are at any point inside QuickBooks Online, you can go to the homepage by just clicking on the QuickBooks logo on the top left of the screen. It would be the same thing as clicking on the dashboard button on the left navigation bar they will both take you to the same place now inside the dashboard you're going to see a snapshot of quickly used uh, financial information such as a quick profit and loss which you can change the reporting period quick expense summary which you can also change the reporting period bank balances if you're running multiple bank accounts you want to know what those balances are a quick list of open invoices overdue invoices and paid invoices, and a chart of sales depending on the month or the reporting period. There's also a small privacy button on the top right of the screen, sometimes called Starbucks mode, which basically when you click on that, no information will be shown. So if you don't want those big graphs, big numbers to be shown while people are around uh, looking at the screen, you can just click on privacy mode and show and hide that dashboard. Now, other important things is here next to the QuickBooks logo, it will be the company name. So the company name that you're working on, especially valuable if you have multiple QuickBooks Online accounts and you're managing 
multiple businesses, you wanna make sure you know which one you're in. On the left navigation bar, you're gonna see a couple of buttons, and this is what they call the centers. If you click on banking, that will take you to the banking center. This is where you manage transactions that you downloaded through the bank or, or uploaded to QuickBooks. You're gonna have the sales center, which is broken down into a couple of categories. We're gonna have an all sales tab, which will give you access to all your sales transactions, invoices, payments, that sort of thing. Your customers tab, which will take you to the list of all your customers where you can create new customers and edit the information for existing customers and products and services, which will give you a list of all the services, products, inventory, non-inventory that you are buying and selling. Then the next tab would be the expenses tab or the expenses center, which is broken down into two options. You're gonna have expenses, which is basically a summary of all uh, the expenses that you have uh, had in the company and you can filter these based on vendor name, supplier name, uh, and date range. You can also click on suppliers and get a list of all your vendors or the suppliers, the people that you buy from, the people that usually owe money to in, the, in a regular course of business. Then we're gonna see the projects tab, which is that feature that we turned on through the preferences, which will give you a summary and detailed information about all your projects and projects profitability. Then under employees, as I mentioned earlier, depending on the country, you might or might not be able to run a payroll inside QuickBooks. On the global edition of QuickBooks Online, there will be no payroll because it's not tied to any country's uh, payroll tax settings. But you can create your employees if you wanna separate your employees from your vendors or from your suppliers. Then we're gonna see the reports tab or the report center. It gives you access to all sort of financial and management reports. Then under taxes, this is where we're gonna be managing our sales tax or value added tax. Then under accounting, we're gonna see two areas. We're gonna see our chart of accounts, one of the most important areas of QuickBooks Online. And then you are gonna see uh, reconcile, which is where we can reconcile all of our bank accounts, credit card accounts, liability accounts, and so forth. And then you're gonna see an apps tab where you can, you can uh, see any apps that are connected to your QuickBooks Online. You can actually connect third-party apps that add additional functionality into QuickBooks Online, but we will not be getting into the details of that. Now, that's, that's everything on the left navigation bar. On the right side of the screen in the top, you're gonna see a couple of buttons. The help button, which has the question mark, will give you access to searching uh, the built-in help, so you can search anything you want, and if there's some information about it, about it in there, it will find it for you, give you a how-to tutorial, or send you to the article. There's the little bell icon or the notifications icon, which is useful only if you got pending notifications, things that QuickBooks will tell you, hey, you need to uh, look into this notification, look, look into this issue so you can take action. Then we're gonna have the gear menu or the settings menu, which will allow you to do all sorts of settings related uh, features. So we talked about account and settings. You can click on manage users to create additional users to access QuickBooks Online. You can also access your chart of accounts from here. You can customize your forms, such as your invoices. You can access all of your lists, product lists, customer lists, vendor lists, class lists. You can access your recurring transactions. You can access your attachments, your multiple currencies. You can also get access to the module to import lists into QuickBooks Online. So if you have a customer list or a supplier list already in Excel or maybe a product list, in a CSV file, you can import that into QuickBooks. You can access a reconciliation screen and budget screen from here. You can also access the audit log to see who logged into QuickBooks and who did what, and then some generic profile settings here on the all the way to the right side of the settings button. Then you're gonna see a magnifying glass, which is used to do a search and also to view recent transactions. So you can do a generic Search here for customers, reports, suppliers. You can search by amount. You can search by date range. You can also look a, a list of the most recent 10 transactions that have been created or modified, which you can access uh, quite quickly. Or you can click on advanced search and it will take you to a very comprehensive search screen for you to search existing transactions. And lastly, one of the most, most utilized functions, which is a quick create icon, which is a little circle with a cross in it. 
and you can open it and close it. And that is broken down based on the centers. So all the way to the left, you're gonna see customers. So all the customer related transactions are gonna be here. Invoices, receiving a payments, quotes or estimates, giving the customer a credit note or some credit towards a future purchase, recording sales receipts. These are invoices and payments combined, refunding your, your customer some money, doing a delayed credits and delayed charges for future invoicing. And then we're gonna have supplier transactions, such as expenses, checks, bills, bill payments, purchase orders, supplier credits, then employee related transactions, such as uh, timesheets or time data. And then we're gonna see under the other section, doing bank deposits, transfers, journal entries, statements, and inventory quantity adjustment. So that's the basic general navigation on how to get around QuickBooks Online. Let's now set up your chart of accounts. To set up or edit any information in your chart of accounts, we're gonna click on the left navigation bar where it says accounting, and then we're gonna click on chart of accounts. Another way to access the chart of accounts is to click on the gear menu on the top right of the screen and then click on chart of accounts. Now, the first thing you're gonna see is your bank accounts. Then you're gonna see accounts receivable, then current assets, then fixed assets, then other assets or non-current assets, then your liabilities. You're gonna see accounts payable, credit cards, current liabilities, long-term liabilities, and then down to owner's equity. Then you're gonna see your income accounts, your cost of sales accounts, your expense accounts, and then all the way down, you're gonna see other income and other expense accounts. Now by default, QuickBooks will create a chart of accounts for you. You can delete the accounts that you don't want simply by selecting the account that you don't want. So let's say for example, this one called shipping and delivery expense, I don't need it. I'm gonna click on the little triangle next to run report. Then I'm gonna click on make inactive. Once I make it inactive and click on yes, it goes away, it's no longer in my chart of accounts. Now if I wanna rename any of the accounts that I have here, so for example, this one called inventory asset, I wanna change it to stock asset. I'm gonna click on the little triangle to the right, all the way to the right, click on edit, and change this to stock asset and then click on save and close. If I wanna merge accounts that might be duplicates, so for example, I'm gonna scroll down and see that I have two travel uh, expense accounts, one's called travel general and travel selling. Let's say for example, I don't need both of them. All I have to do is edit one of them. So I'm gonna click on the edit menu on the right hand side. I'm gonna change the name, this one to just travel expenses. Okay, I'm gonna take out all that extra information. I'll just type travel expenses, click on save and close. And then I'm looking for the other one that also has this uh, long name and I wanna merge it with my current travel expense account. So I'm gonna click on the triangle and then click on edit. And then I'm gonna make this the exact same name as the other one. So as long as I have two accounts with the same name, same type and same detail type, once I click save and close, it will ask me, would you like to merge the two accounts? You will click on yes, and then yes, and yes, and then all the details that have been in those accounts, assuming that you already have entered information, will be merged into one. Now, let's talk about creating new accounts. So I'm gonna click on the right-hand side of the screen. I'm gonna click on new. And let's say I wanna create an expense account called training and education. So I'm gonna click on account type and choose the right type. So training and education is an expense account. So I'm gonna scroll down to expenses and select that option. Then under detail type, I'm gonna look for the one that makes the most sense. If for whatever reason I can't find the appropriate one, I'm just gonna pick other miscellaneous service costs or office general. You're gonna find, always gonna find something that's mostly related to that. So I'll click on this and then I'll change the name and give it the proper name I want. So let's say I wanna call this uh, training and education. So I got my account name, I have my account type and my detail type, and then I just have to click on save and close. Now I can search the accounts on this little search box here. Let me type training, there it is. 
So if I want to manipulate it, I can search it first before I do anything else. Let me delete that. Now, if I want to take multiple accounts and do batch edit to them, so for example, I got these two sales accounts here, and if I select the both of them and then click on batch actions, I can set the default tax code for these. We'll talk more about value added tax later on as we go. If I click on the pencil button here on the right hand side, I get to edit these in bulk. So if I want to change the names in bulk and then click on save, I can do that. I can click on the printer icon and print my chart of accounts. So if I want to uh, work on it, manipulate it manually on paper before I come back into QuickBooks and edit, I'm welcome to do that. And then if I click on the gear menu, all the way to the right, the small gear menu, next to the print icon, I can choose which columns I want to display. I can also choose my deleted or inactive accounts, and I can choose how many active rows I want to see on the screen. I can also run a report that shows me all my current accounts. So it's very powerful, the chart of accounts feature. I'll show you one more thing, which are sub accounts. So let's say, for example, down to my travel account. Let's go down to my travel account. And let's say I want to create subcategories under travel. So what I would do is I would click on the new button on the top right of the screen. I'm going to select the account type and the detail type to be the same as my parent account. So I'm going to pick their expenses and then I'm going to go down and pick uh, travel. Then I'm going to change this account. I'm going to call this airfare. So these are all the uh, airline tickets that we buy. I'm going to make this a sub account, click on the sub account checkbox and type in their travel. So I select travel and then I can click on the drop down menu down here and click on save and new. I'm going to create another travel sub account. So I'm going to go back and select expenses again, detail type, select travel again. And then for this one, let's call it hotels, make this a sub account by clicking on that checkbox and make it a sub account of my generic travel account. Then I'm gonna click down here to save and close. Then I'm gonna type on the search, I'm gonna type travel. There's my parent travel account. I'm gonna delete it from the search. I'm gonna scroll down. And I'm gonna see I got my generic travel expense account, my sub account of airfare, look at the indentation, and my sub account of hotels. The usage of accounts will make a lot more sense as we start creating some transactions. Let's do some sales tracking, customize invoices, and track customer accounts receivable. There are several ways to track sales inside QuickBooks Online. The most common way is through a sales receipt. We're gonna click on the Quick Create button on the top right of the screen, and then we're gonna click on Sales Receipt. A sales receipt is an invoice and a payment combined. With a sales receipt, I'll be able to select which of my customers I'm selling to, select the date of the sale, select which bank account this sale is being posited to directly. So I'm gonna pick my US dollars bank accounts. I can pick the service, product or services being sold. Let's say for example, we're selling these customers some consulting work, two hours times $100 per hour, that would add up to $200. I'm going to make this 21% value added tax. We'll go back to value added tax a little bit later on. I'm going to choose the payment method. Let's say they paid me cash. And then I'm going to click on the drop down and click on save and close. So a sales receipt allows me to select customer information, have a, the individual number for each sales transaction, choose the payment type, choose the bank account where the money is going to go into, and also select the specific product and service itemized based on quantity and rate to the customer. Let me go ahead and click on save and close. A different way of doing uh, tracking sales is through deposits. So if you don't want to track details about the sale, you just want to track the money coming into the bank. That's another alternate way to track income. So we're going to click on the quick create button on the top right, and then we're going to click on bank deposit. Once we click on bank deposit, we'll be able to choose which bank account the money is going to be deposited in. Let's choose, for example, our checking account in US dollars, pick the date of the deposit that came in the bank, pick the currency, 
select the customer's name and that's optional. You actually don't have to select the customer's name in these type of transactions. Select the account in which the income is going to be reported to in your chart of accounts. So when you click on the drop down menu, you're going to see all your income accounts in the top. So let's say, for example, this is a wholesale sale. On the description, we're going to put a bulk sale, something like that. Payment method, let's go ahead and put uh, EFT. Dollar amount, let's say it was $5,000. And then tax, let's say, for example, is a 10% uh, tax rate. Now, once you see the deposit of $5,500 coming into the bank account, that will go straight into the bank, but it will not hit any items or product details. We skip sales receipts only when we record deposits that we don't want items or itemized sale for. This is not the most typical way, but there are some companies that would do that. I'm going to click on the drop down menu, save and close, and that will finish that transaction. Now, the most common way to track income is through invoices. Now, the difference is, is that invoices are not going to affect your bank account. Invoices are going to affect your accounts receivable. So if you want to create a sale in which your customer will pay you later on or you would manage the invoice and the payment as two separate transactions, then what you need to be using is invoices. I'm going to click on the quick create button on the top right of the screen. Then I'm going to go into customers and then click on invoice. Now the invoice is identical to the sales receipt. The only difference is instead of having a bank account you choose, you're going to choose the net terms. You can customize the terms. You can select, create any terms really that you want, but by default, you're going to have do on receipt or net 30. Let's click on the drop down menu and let's select the customer that we want to sell to. And the, that customer is already in my, in my item, in my database. I'm going to go to terms and pick net 15. So basically the difference between the invoice date and the due date would be those 15 days. In other words, that customer has 15 days to pay you until they're overdue. On their service date, I can actually pick a service date if I also want to track when the service was performed, if it happened to be different than the invoice date. So I'm going to pick here October 1st. On the product and service, I have a default hours and sales product and services on the list. We can create new ones. We'll go back and, and talk about that uh, pretty soon. And But I'm going to pick just uh, sales. And then I'm going to say here we had a iPad for sale, right? Whatever, whatever it is that we're tracking. I'm going to go into quantity on the rate. Let me choose here $6.99. And let's say, for example, that's subject to 10% tax. So my invoice amount, my tax rate will all be totaled in the balance due. Again, in this particular example, I'm not tracking inventory. That's why the inventory is not in the drop down menu of products and services, we're also going to go back and talk about inventory pretty soon as well. For now, this is just a generic sale in which we're not tracking inventory for. I can also verify that my customer's email is correct. And I have two choices on the bottom right. I can do save and send if I want the invoice to be emailed to the customer directly, or I can click on the drop down menu and pick save and new to skip to a new invoice save and close, or this awesome feature in the international edition called save and share to WhatsApp. So if you have customers in WhatsApp and that's how you do business with, you can actually attach the invoice via a WhatsApp message straight from QuickBooks Online. So let's go ahead and click on save and close. And that would be completed. Now let's talk about what that invoice looks like once the customer receives it in an email or prints it uh, from a PDF file. So let's click on new transactions and let's go ahead and click on invoice. And we're also going to create a new customer on the fly. So we're going to click on the drop down menu under customers and click on add new. Let's give this customer a name. Let's say this is called Eurozone Foods. Let's say that's the name of the customer that we have. We pick the currency of that customer. We'll go ahead and click on save. Net terms, let's say, for example, we give them 60 days to pay. And this invoice was dated from October 2nd. Then I'm going to click on product and service and pick my generic sales item. And let's put here large order from October, whatever description we want to put in there. And let's say that's going to be one lump sum of $10,000. Let's 
Let's also charge them for shipping. So we'll, I'm gonna create a new product on the fly here. I'm gonna click on the drop down menu and click on add new. Then I'm gonna click on service. I'm gonna select shipping. So I'm basically charging them for shipping. I'm gonna go down to income account, click on the drop down menu and select any of the income accounts are here. So I'm just gonna pick uh, sales retail or sales wholesale and then click on save and close. So I created a new item for our items, uh, products and services list. When I click on the drop down menu, now we're gonna see that third option in there. We're gonna talk about inventory pretty soon, which is gonna be very pertinent when it comes to creating new items. So let's call this one uh, shipping to uh, Germany, whatever it happens to be. And let's say this is gonna be $1,500. So let's say the shipping itself will be subject to 21% or the product will be subject to 21% and the shipping subject to let's say 10%. So you can actually have multiple sales tax or value added tax rates across multiple items depending on your home country and your tax rules that might be something that you may need to manage. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on print preview, print or preview, and I'll click on that. And we get to see exactly what the invoice is gonna look like once it's converted to PDF and is sent to our customer. Notice all the header information on the top right of the screen, our bill to customer, invoice number, date, terms, due date. You see each of the line items, quantity, rate, amount, tax and a detail of the tax summary. At this point, I can print it or save it as a PDF. Let me go ahead and close it. So let's say I wanna change the look and feel of this invoice. So all the way in the bottom, there's a button that says customize. Once I click on customize, I can click on edit current. This is gonna take me to the invoice layout editor. At this point, I can change certain areas, colors, fields inside of our invoice that our customer sees. So I'm gonna click on splash color, and then I'm gonna make this red. So I'm gonna make the overall invoice red, although it defaulted to blue earlier because that was the color of the logo. So I'll actually detect the color of the logo and attempt to make it a little bit uh, based on the logo color. But let's go back and make this, uh, the general colors red. Now here where it says, try your fonts, we can change to a different font size. Let's make this Arial and let's make this 12. So there's a little bit of tweaking when it comes to fonts. And then when it says here, when in doubt print, this is where you can choose your margin. So you can choose what type of margins you wanna have on the printout. We're gonna click on dive into the template where we can change the general template. So there's usually between five and six different template types uh, as a default that you can pick from. So we can change this one to the friendly. Notice it has a whole different look and feel different arrangements of the different areas. There's bold, there's fresh, there's modern, airy classic. So a couple of options. So let's do with bold. We'll start with this one. And then we're gonna click on content on the top of the screen. Under content's gonna ask me to click on the general area. So either on the header, on the content or the body or the footer so I can change what's being shown in there. Let's start with the header. I'm gonna click on the little pencil icon on the top right so I can make some changes on the header. I can change the company name that, that is displayed to our customers. I can change the phone number. I can choose whether or not I wanna show my email or an address. I can change the name of the invoice. So I can give, give this a different name like pro forma invoice or I can call it final invoice, whatever really I want. I can pick what I wanna call the invoice and then whether or not I wanna show additional fields such as shipping terms and that sort of thing. I can click on the body and also pick what columns I would like to see. So if I don't want the customer to see the product name, I can remove that and they can see only the description or we can remove the description and only show the product name. You can also hide quantity and rate and just show the total amount. You can show and hide the tax if you want to. So there's a lot of flexibility on what you can see in there. Let me click on the header section. This is where I can add a, a customer message at the end. So if I wanna put thank you for your business or a return policy or something like that, that would be a great place to put it. 
there's some additional fields such as discount deposit or estimate summary that we can also add in there if we want to so feel free to play with those settings until you get to where you want to be let me go ahead and click on done i'm going to go back to my previous invoice here click on print preview and there's the new look of my invoice so there's a lot of flexibility there in terms of how you want that invoice to look like now we went ahead and created a invoice a sales receipt and a deposit so we did those three examples now generally speaking sales receipts and deposits are going to be tied to your bank account so you don't need that second transaction to mark the invoice paid however when we do invoices themselves you would have to have that second transaction called receive payment to be able to mark that invoice paid and generally that is because an invoice is used to enter a sale that hasn't been paid yet in a different date on a different transaction you will get paid so let's go ahead and receive the payment by clicking on receive payment i'm going to select the customer that i'm going to receive a payment for so let's pick that eurozone foods customer and notice that once i select that customer it will give me a list of all the open invoices at this point i can receive the full payment or even a partial payment so let's say for example this customer paid me with a check so I'm going to select the check and then I'll put the check number here. Then I get to choose which bank account the money is being deposited to. Let's say they're paying me $8,000. Then I can select which invoice I want to apply the $8,000 to and the specific amount to apply to each invoice. In this particular case, there's only one invoice. So that's the only one I'll be applying to. And then I want to pick which date I received that payment. So let's say I received that payment on the 16th. At that point, I will be all set. I can click on save and new or save and close and I would finish that transaction. So those are all the transactions pertaining recording sales and accounts receivable. Let's move on to tracking purchases and supplier accounts payable. So we can track purchases and expenses in multiple ways. When you click on the quick create button on the top right of the screen under suppliers you're going to see expense check and bill those three are the type of transactions that you can use to record purchases expenses and accounts payable let's start by doing expense when i click on an expense it will ask me which bank account are you expending from so an expense is to record something money that's coming out of your bank going to pay a supplier so for example, let's say I'm going to wire transfer one of my vendors, one of my suppliers for some product. So I'm going to click on payee. I'm going to select one of my vendors from my vendor list. Then under category, I'm going to pick the category of expense that I am will be spending for this particular vendor. Let's say, for example, I'm going to buy some office supplies from them, some office expenses. Under description, I'll put here new computer software. And let's say this is going to be a $900 cost. The tax is 10%. I'm going to leave the customer project information out for a second until we talk about billable expenses. Then I'm going to put up here some sort of reference number, maybe some bank transaction number. And where it says payment method, I can choose the payment method. You can create new payment methods as well. If you don't see all the ones that you, uh, that you want to use there, I can click on add new and create, for example, one call wire transfer. So whichever type of method that you use to pay or get paid that you want to keep good information for, you can create all sorts of payment methods based on what you need. Now we pick the date of the expense. So let's say this happened on October 17th. We go down, look at the total and the subtotal, and then we click save and close on the bottom right of the screen. So that's recording an expense of money that came out of the bank. Now, a very similar transaction to expense would be check. So a check would be a check that you wrote without paying a bill or a supplier bill that you created previously. So just like an expense, I'm creating money out from my bank that is immediately going to make an expenditure. So let's say, for example, my vendor or my supplier that I'm paying is not in my list. I can just add them on the fly. So I'm going to click on add new. I'm going to call this supplier Mark Smith. Let's say he's a 
person that's helping me around the office. I'm going to click on Save. Under Category, I'm going to select Casual Labor. It's not in my chart of accounts. If that's not there, that's OK. You can create the account on the fly as well. So we're going to type, type Casual Labor, click on Add. A new pop-up will come up saying, hey, I would like to create a new account that's not already in your account database. So I'm going to select Expense as the account type. Under Detail Type, here's this one called Cost of Labor. So I'll pick that. And then under Name, you can name it however you want. Let's add the U there so it's uh, more similar to the spelling in the UK and Australia. So we got a casual labor there. And then we click on Save and Close. And there's my expense account. So let's call this one Help in the Office. And let's say we're going to pay this person $500. And let's say that there's no uh, tax on this one. So I can actually click on uh, the tax amount. So we'll talk about taxes very soon. And we're going to call out of scope tax or tax inclusive, something that won't charge me additional tax or value added tax. Going to bank account, pick the bank account that I'll be writing the check from. And then on the right side of the screen, write down the check number. Now, at this point, you would probably uh, print your check from a special system that you have to print checks from, or you will write a handwritten check. And then once you do that, you can record it in QuickBooks by clicking on Save and Close. So I've showed you how to do expenses and checks that are not related to a supplier bill. Now, a supplier bill is a little bit different. A supplier bill is when we want to record an expense today, but there will be a separate transaction to make that payment. This is similar to the invoice receive payment transactions where two separate events are controlling the overall transaction and money flow. So when I create a bill, I'll create an expense that I recognize today, and I can either pay that bill with a wire transfer or a check or any sort of electronic payment, but it will be two separate transactions. So let me start by creating bill. Let me select my vendor from my supplier list or my supplier from my list. Let's say, for example, this is the supplier I'm going to get a bill from. Let's say I received the bill on October 2nd and they're giving me 30 days to pay. So now my due date would be November 1st. I'm going to give the bill number, which is the invoice number of my supplier invoicing me. I'm going to pick the account from the category of the type of a transaction expense or cost type of transaction that I'm doing. So I categorize it correctly into my chart of accounts. Let's say I want to send this to materials, cost of sales, and let's say this is $4,000. I'm going to leave the customer information out. We're going to talk about billable or, or project tracking uh, on the next example. So let's go ahead and click on save and close. And that created and accounts payable. So now I owe money to my vendor. Quickly, if you're doing inventory purchases, you probably want to start by doing a purchase order first. So I'm going to click on purchase order. I'm going to select the supplier I'm going to buy from. Let's say it's this one, A1 Distributors. I'm going to go down and pick from my item list instead of picking from my category details. Category details is about choosing from your chart of accounts, where item list is by choosing from your products and services list. So you're going to create a new product or a new inventory part on the fly. We can click on the drop down menu here, click on add new. We can pick a, a service or a non inventory part. If inventory is not turned on, you would have to click on turn on inventory tracking. We'll do that on the next example as well. So I'm going to pick a non inventory part. I'm going to call this one widget. 101, click on Save and Close, and I created my new non-inventory product. Let's say I'm going to buy 5,000 items for $2.50 each, 2.50. And then let's say the tax on this is 10%. There's my total purchase order. I'm going to click on Save and Close. That purchase order does not affect my accounts payable. If I wanted to affect my accounts payable, I need to convert the purchase order into a bill. So the way to do that is to click on the Quick Create button, click on Bill, 
select the supplier from the supplier drop down you're going to notice on the right hand side of the screen a drawer opens up and gives and tells you lets you know that there's open purchase orders that could be used to create the bill from so assuming that we're receiving those items or we're receiving that service from that provider from that purchase order we just click on add all and it will add the items from that purchase order I can also delete anything on the category section if I don't need it. The total here is 12,500. Click on save and close, and I've created a bill from that purchase order. Now, if I click on the expenses type on, on the left-hand side, and then click on suppliers, notice that there's my two suppliers here that I have bills for and the total open balance. Here where it says open bills, I can click on that open bills icon and I can click based on each vendor on the link where it says pending bills. I can click on any of them and it will take me to a detailed transaction list of that vendor that shows all my expenses and all my bills. Here where it says filter, I'm gonna click on type, click on open bills, click on apply, and then only my open bills are showing up. Now what's great about this is you can track expenses that were immediately paid to the vendors and track bills that are going to be paid into the future uh, all at the same time for the same supplier or even multiple suppliers. Now, when I click on the Quick Create button, we, we talked about expenses, check, purchase orders, and bills. Let's say that now it's time to pay off one of the bills that I owe that supplier. So I'm going to click on Pay Bills. Here's a list of all the open bills that I have. We can sort it by due date, sort it, or filter it by payee i'm going to select the account bank account that i'm going to pay them from i'm going to select which bills i'm going to be paying to those suppliers at this time so let's say i want to pay these two i just put a checkbox next to the ones that i want to pay i can partially pay by selecting the amount here where it says payment if i want to here's my total amount to pay if i wanted to pay those two bills pick the payment date let's say this was paid on the 15th and then i can give it a reference number so if i'm paying with a check for example that would be the check number if i'm paying with a wire transfer or some sort of electronic transaction that would be the number i want to tie to that transaction then at this point i would click on save on the bottom right and that will mark those bills paid and that would make that separate transaction that separates the bill from the payment itself let's talk about managing inventory so to manage inventory, we're going to click on the sales tab on the left hand side. Then we're going to click on products and services. We're going to see all the products and services that have already been created in our QuickBooks file, or we can create new ones by clicking on the new button on the top right. Once we click on new, there's going to be a drawer that slides from the right. And it gives you a couple options, non inventory, service, bundle or inventory. To, to turn on inventory, just click on Turn on Inventory Tracking. Remember, you need QuickBooks Online Plus to manage inventory. Once inventory is turned on, you will now see inventory, non-inventory, service, and bundle as your options. Let me go ahead and click on inventory, and let's create blue shirt. We'll create our first inventory item. Now, we can also group our inventory by categories. So I'm going to add a category, and we're going to call this one shirts. I'm going to click on Save initial quantity let's say that we have zero we usually put today's date in there whatever today's date happens to be reorder point is when you get to a certain stock level when would you like to order some more let's say we want to have at least 10 of these in stock we get to choose the inventory asset account that we want to be the default account we can pick this stock asset current asset account that we have then we get to pick the income account that you want those sales to go into when the inventory is sold. We're also going to set a sales price. So let's say this blue shirt is going to be $25. We're going to choose whether it's inclusive of tax or what tax rate it would qualify. Let's say this one would get 21%. Then we get to pick our cost. This is the default cost that we're going to pay for for every time we buy these shirts from the supplier. So let's say we're paying $12.50 for this. So one, two, comma five zero 
and we get to choose whether or not there is a purchase tax. So I'm gonna go ahead at this point and click save and close. And now I created my blue shirt inventory item. Let me do the same thing, click on new, go to inventory, now let's do red shirt. Red shirt, select the category under shirts. Let's say I don't have any in stock right now. We put today's date and the as of date. Reorder point, let's say we want a minimum of 30. So we'll put 30 in there. Pick our stock asset account, inventory asset account. Pick our income account. Let's say this one sells for $29 retail. Also 21% tax or value added tax. Let's say I pay for these $18. Then I'm gonna click on save and close. So I created my two shirts from my inventory. Let's create one more. Go to inventory. Let's call it black leather shoes and we'll make this size 11 on their category we'll create a new category called shoes now you notice how we're grouping all our inventory on category quantity on hand zero today's date reorder point let's say i want to have 10 of these in stock inventory asset account income account Let's say these sell for $68, also eligible for 21% value added tax. Let's say our cost for this is 47, save and close. So now I got my inventory items all organized into my products and services list. I would do a purchase order as we covered earlier. So I'm gonna click on quick create purchase order. Let's say I have a new supplier, so I'm gonna click on the drop down menu click on add new let's say my new supplier's name is world shoe and let's say we don't pay him in US dollars let's say we pay him in Canadian dollars so I'm gonna select here Canadian dollars because this is gonna be a Canadian uh, dollar supplier I'm gonna click on save notice that the exchange rate shows up immediately when you use a foreign or multiple currency let's go ahead and choose the products that we're gonna buy from them. So let's say we're gonna buy 100 red shirts or blue shirts and 100 red shirts. Notice that my rate changes based on the actual uh, exchange rate. So that makes it uh, really, really great that uh, QuickBooks will on the, on the fly recalculate my exchange rate based on the default cost that we put, which we had put it at US dollars. Then I'm going to pick uh, the tax that I'm going to pay for these. Then I'm going to click on save and close. Then after the purchase order is created, we're going to go ahead and create the bill to receive the inventory. Let me go ahead and select my supplier here, Wall Shoe. Let me click on add all on the right hand side so I can bring the entire purchase order items into the bill. I'm going to click on save and close. Now I can actually see that I have stock. You see my blue shirt, I have 100 in stock, and there's my red shirt, I have 100 in stock. Now let me sell some real quick by creating an invoice. Let's pick one of my customers. Let's say we're gonna sell some red shirts. Let's go ahead and sell them 27 red shirts at the default sales price. Click on save and close. Now to go back into my products and services list, you can see that I have 73 red shirts in stock and 100 blue shirts in stock. Managing inventory is pretty simple. You create the items, receive them with a bill or pay them with a check or expense to bring them into inventory and you would uh, sell them through an invoice or a sales receipt to bring the inventory down. Uh, if you have all the transactions accurate, your stock will always be accurate as well. Let's do a little bit of time tracking and billable expenses. Now, time tracking is a fairly simple concept. What we're going to do is we're going to click on the Quick Create button, and then under Employees, we're going to click on Weekly Timesheet. Once we select Weekly Timesheet, we're going to click on Employees from our employee list. If they're not in there, we can basically add them on the fly. Click on Add New. Let's add Hector Garcia, which is one of our employees. Pick the week that we're going to time track for, and then we're going to choose what Hector did that week. So we're going to say that he worked for the Eurozone customer for 
eight hours on Monday and six hours on Tuesday. Let's say he worked for the U.S. wholesaler corporation customer two hours on Tuesday, four hours on Wednesday. And let's say there's a new customer. Let's call her Betty Smith. Let's say it's a it's an actual end user, a consumer. Click on save. And let's say Hector worked on Betty Smith eight hours on Thursday and eight hours on Friday. So it's the to total hours that Hector worked is 36 hours. So we're keeping track of everything that Hector's worked. And then there's billable. So am I going to charge these customers for this work? So you can actually track time just internally to know what your employees are doing for what project. And you can also track time for the purposes of billing that client maybe an hourly rate afterwards. So let's say for the first two customers, we're not going to bill them, so we'll uncheck billable. But let's say that for Betty Smith, we do want to charge Hector's time at $30 an hour. So we're going to make sure that that checkbox is there and we'll put here 30. So in the future, when I create an invoice for Betty Smith, QuickBooks will prompt me to take those 16 hours and bill Be Betty $480. I'm going to go ahead and click on save and close. Then I'm going to create a new invoice. I'm going to go to quick create and then go to invoice. I will select the customer. Let's select Betty Smith. And you will notice as soon as I select Betty Smith, on the right hand side, we have a drawer that shows up and says, hey, by the way, we got some billable time for this customer. At this point, I can click on add all. It will automatically create the invoice with the service date, with the default item of hours, the rate, times the quantity, and create the invoice uh, for you. So I can choose the type of tax that I want to charge on this, and then click save and close. Select the tax, 21%, 21%, and save and close, and that should do it. So billable time, pretty simple concept. Now, billable expenses are a little bit different. Let's say, for example, that I had to pay to ship a product to a customer that the, the customer has to reimburse me for. So I'm going to create an expense. I'm going to go to the Quick Create button, click on Expense. I'm going to uh, create, select my shipping company. If it's not here, I can create on the fly. So let me create DHL as a supplier. Click on Save. And let's say, for example, I'm going to put this under the shipping category. Let's see if we have an ex we have There you go. We got an expense account called Freight and Delivery. Let's call it here Overnight request from customer let's say this was $36 and let's say this is I didn't pay any tax on this but here's the kicker I have to select the customer related to this expense so I'm gonna click on the drop down menu and click on Betty Smith when I, once I create a customer I select that customer to the expense that expense has been allocated to Betty Smith so in the future if I want to know my profits for Betty Smith it would be all my sales minus these specific expenses. Now, I don't have the function to be able to bill my billable expenses to my customer because it's not turned on yet, so we'll do that. Let me go ahead and click on Save and Close. Let me go into the gear menu, go to Account and Settings. We're going to go into ex the Expenses tab, then we're going to click on Bills and Expenses, and there's a little option that says Make Expenses and Items Billable. If I select that, I'm going to enable the capacity to mark expenses to customers or projects billable. So I click on Save. Now I can click on Done. I can click on the magnifying glass to see my recent transactions. Go back to that DHL transaction. You will notice that now next to customer Betty Smith, there's now a little box where I can select billable. Once I select billable, I will now be able to invoice my client for those specific $36. So I'm going to click on Save and Close. I'm going to click on Create New Invoice. I'm going to select my customer, Betty Smith. And as expected, on the right-hand side, there's my billable expense. I can choose to add it or not to the invoice, depending on the situation. Click on Add. Charge the tax if I'm supposed to charge the tax. Select that. And then click on Save and Close. So those are billable time and billable expenses. Let's do a quick example on project tracking. So your projects is turned on. You're going to see a projects tab on the left hand side. Once I click on projects, we're going to click on start a project. 
then we're going to give a new project a name so let's call this one Spain expansion so let's say we have a customer that's expanding into Spain and we want to track the profitability of that particular job or that particular project separate from uh, the regular sales or maybe other projects so let's say this Eurozone Foods uh, we're going to have that project be tracked completely separate so we're going to go ahead and click on save and now you're going to notice that a new dashboard will show up where it will, will separate the income the cost and now we'll now show a new number called profit I'm going to create invoices for this customer and there's going to be costs associated to it so let's start by creating an invoice I'm going to click on add to project and then click on invoice notice that my customer now has more information now it says eurozone and then there's an indentation and it says spain expansions if you look a little bit further to the right it says project of eurozone so you'll be able to know what a project is different from what a customer is let's say for example we're going to sell this customer some blue shirts and i sell them 50 blue shirts at 21 dollars each i'm going to go ahead and click on save and close and let's say we're going to incur some expenses for this project so we're going to click on add to project click on bill and let's say i have to pay shipping for this i'm going to click on i'm going to select my vendor here dhl let's call this one delivery expenses let's say i have to pay 980 dollars for the shipping cost for this project here on the customer project side notice that i have to select the specific project inside that customer let's say my customer will not reimburse me for it it's all going to be sort of inclusive of the sales price so i'm not going to mark it billable let's select out of scope tax let's say there's no tax on this and click on save and close perfect now notice that i have my sale for a thousand dollars i have my cost for 1605 and this is telling me that i lost money on this particular project inside projects you can click on transactions and you can see all the transactions associated with that customer you can click on time activity and see if there's any time entries any time sheets being allocated to this particular project and when you, you can click on project reports i can click on project profitability and we can see our sales cost of sales freight and shipping all broken down let's say that i made the mistake and these 900 dollars are not supposed to be allocated to this project only let's say that freight is for two separate projects so I can actually click on that $980 which will take me to a detailed list of all the bills that have been allocated to that project I can click on any of the components of that bill there it will take me back to the original bill and let's say that really only $80 of this goes to this project and $900 is going to go to a different customer or project so notice that I actually allocated in a single bill for a single supplier two different line items. One is going to go to one customer, the other one to a different customer or project. Once I click on save and close and I go back to projects, I will now be able to click on the project and see that now my project is profitable. So project tracking is great. So you can on the fly pretty much immediately know your costs, know your profits for every customer project. Let's briefly talk about tracking sales tax or value added taxes. So to track sales tax, we're going to click on the taxes tab on the left navigation bar. That's going to actually track all of the sales taxes or value added taxes we have collected. On this presentation, we did a whole bunch of transactions that contain different levels of taxes. So notice here all the taxes that have been collected and the taxes that have been offset by purchases now i can click on add tax if i wanted to add or create a new tax click on add tax and then it'll ask me is this a regular tax rate is this a group rate or is this a custom tax so if i click on tax rate i'm going to add an additional rate to the current taxes i have already created if under group rate i can combine multiple taxes in certain countries you have to charge multiple layers of taxes to group them together or we can just do a custom tax again these are not based on any particular country's tax rules these are generic tax settings that you're going to have to adapt to the home country so i'm going to click on custom tax and i'm going to create a, a tax name 
So let's call this one Spain VAT, okay? And then under tax agency name, I can call this one whatever the tax agency is. Let's just leave it there. Registration number would be like the tax number that you use for that particular agency. Then let's say, for example, we're going to start collecting uh, tax on October. And the filing frequency, let's say it's quarterly. Then the reporting method would be accrual or cash. Most countries will be on accrual, but that could vary. And then whether or not the tax is on sales, purchases, or both. So let's say that for this one, it's only going to be tax on sales. And let's make this one 15% and then click on save. So I successfully created my new custom tax. So in the future, when I go create a new invoice, let's go ahead and create a new invoice. In the drop down menu of all my available taxes, I'm going to see the ones I created previously and my new Spain value added tax. So if you're collecting tax across multiple countries, multiple cities, even within the country, or multiple tax rates, depending on the products and services that you sell, you can actually manage all of these in QuickBooks, and then you can pull a report or view a report of all your taxable sales. Let's talk about budgets and financial reports. To set up a budget, we're going to click on the gear menu on the top right of the screen. We're going to click on budgeting. Then we're going to click on add budget. We're going to call this one the 2019 slash 2020 budget. We pick whatever the fiscal year or the financial year that it is. We can make budgets yearly, annual, quarterly, whatever we want. Let's do it uh, yearly to simplify the information here. Then we're going to click on next. And then all the boxes will fill in. So under sales, let's say our budget is 500,000. And then let's go under cost to sales. And let's say our budget is 300,000. Let's go down to cash or labor. Let's say this is going to be 50,000. Bank charges, 100. Legal and professional fees, 15,000. Office expenses, let's say 12,000. So just to kind of simplify, we're going to just do a couple of them. Click on save. And I created a very, very simple budget. I'm going to go ahead and close it. Then I'm going to go into where it says actions, click on the drop down and click where it says run budgets versus actual report. Once I click on budgets versus actual report, I can pick the actual uh, reporting period. So I can pick whatever dates I want to see. And then we're going to see our actual sales versus our budget and the percentage completion. So as I create more sales and have more expenses, my actual expenses and my budget will probably get closer to reality. With these percentages, I can know exactly where I stand in terms of what I plan to spend. Some of the additional reports worth looking at, let's click on the reports tab on the left hand side, would be the standard profit and loss or the income statement. So I'm going to click on profit and loss. I'm going to select on the drop down menu, select this month, and then click on run report. And I can see all of my sales, all of my income, all of my cost, all of my expenses, and then my profit, which apparently I'm running at a loss. Let me click on reports and let's run a balance sheet. And here's all my cash, stock assets, accounts receivable, accounts payable in both US dollars and Canadian dollars. These are actually based on home currency, but letting you know that your vendors were Canadian dollar vendors, my value added tax or sales tax payable, my net income, everything gets organized into standard financial statements. On the reports, we can also take a look at our who owes you section, where I can pull my accounts receivable aging summary, which gives me a list of all my customers and how late the invoice values are. So I can see exactly who owes me and how late those invoices potentially are. Let's go back to the report list and look at a similar report, which would be the accounts payable detail, which will show me all of my accounts payable in detail with the past due date. So I know exactly how much I owe my vendors and whether or not I am in time or I am past due. On the reports, it's also worth looking at an inventory report. So we're going to go down to 
our inventory reports. Let's go here where it says find report and type inventory. We'll do inventory evaluation summary. And here's all my inventory, quantity in stock, and asset value. On the reports, there's also custom reports we can save, and there's also management reports. Management reports, let's do a quick one here. It's a very easy to read, graphical way of packaging the reports into one single PDF that contains all the re basic reports, profit and loss, balance sheet. You can also edit it and add additional reports to the package if you want to make it very easy for management to digest the information in a quarterly, monthly, annual basis, however often management checks reports. Let's talk about online banking and bank reconciliations. Now, some banks can actually connect to QuickBooks and upload transaction data directly to speed up the process in which you record income and expenses. You're going to click on the banking tab on the left hand side and then you're going to click on connect account. You're going to search your bank, HSBC, select the one that you want to connect with and then our QuickBooks will tell you whether or not you can connect to it. If you can connect to it, it will prompt you to enter the username and password. For example, let me pick another one here and let me pick another one that actually gives me an error and it says it cannot be connected. So not all the banks can connect. QuickBooks will tell you whether or not you can connect, but that's okay. If you can connect, you can actually upload the transactions if you have them in a CSV file. So if you already have a CSV file or like an Excel file of all the bank transactions, you can click on upload transactions. We will click on browse. I'm going to select a CSV file that I have in my computer, click open. Then I'll click on next. It will ask me which bank account would you like to download these transactions into? I'll select the bank account, click on next. It would ask me, how is this CSV file configured? I would say, well, column A is the date, column two is the payee, and then column three is the amount, right? Based on how your CSV file is set up. Then I will show you a screen with a preview of all the transactions that are gonna be downloaded into your banking. We're going to click on next, click on yes. Then we'll click on let go. And then in the banking tab, you're now going to see all the transactions that you downloaded through the bank. At this point, we can actually pick any of these transactions here and we can select the payee. So let's call this one HSBC. On the category, we can call this bank charges select if there's any value added tax, customer, and I will add it straight into the register. You will notice that once you create transactions, QuickBooks will actually start learning from the banking and start suggesting other transactions to be categorized the same way. So we can start picking the transactions that we want to be categorized the same way, click on batch actions and click on accept. In a nutshell, all these transactions will now show as a registered transaction inside the register. I don't have to enter them manually anymore. They were loaded straight into the register. Let's move on to bank reconciliations. So I'm going to click on the gear menu and then we're going to click on reconcile. At the end of each month, typically what we're going to do is we're going to go into the reconcile screen, select the bank account that we want to reconcile, pick the ending balance. Let's say the ending balance here is 45,000. Pick the ending date, let's say this is October 31st, 2019, then click on Start Reconciling. You're going to see all the transactions, debits and credits, payments and deposits be posted into the reconciliation screen. Typically, you're going to take the bank statement at the end of the month. You're going to compare all the deposits and all the expenses that came out of the bank account, and you will get to the point where the difference here will be zero. Once the difference is zero, you have reconciled, you can save it, and now your bank will be marked as reconciled. And at that point, you can delete any duplicate uh, or unclear transactions if they were entered by mistake. So the bank reconciliation is a really good uh, starting point to make sure that your accounting is accurate. Let's move on to document attachments. And this will be the last part of the presentation. But document attachments are really, really powerful way to showcase how great it is to have accounting on the cloud. 
because you can upload documents to a centralized place and have one place where you can manage all your financial related documents. Let's say, for example, I'm going to book a travel expense and attach the actual receipt next to it. So I'm going to click here into expense. Let's say, for example, I paid Virgin Airlines for some airfare. We'll create that as a supplier. Let's put that here under travel airfare. Let's say that's going to be $2,500. And let's say it's uh, out of scope on tax. So I won't charge tax on that. I'm going to go ahead and click on save. So I created the expense, but I'm going to go down here where it says attachments. I'm going to click on the box that says drop, drag and drop. I can actually drag and drop or select any PDF image, anything that's really saved in my computer up to 25 megabytes. I can attach it. I'm going to go ahead and click on open. It will upload the attachment. And now that attachment is attached to the transaction itself. If I click on the link in there that you see on the bottom, I can see the actual attachment that I have added to that transaction. I'm going to go ahead and click on save and close. Then I'm going to click on the gear menu on the top right. Then I click on attachments. And here's going to be a full database of all the attachments that I have. It gives me a quick preview with the name of the file, the size, when it was uploaded. And there's a direct link to look at the transaction uh, that has that attachment connected to it. I can actually download any of these one by one or delete them if I want to, or I can actually select them all, click on batch actions and click on export and download one big file to back up all of my attachments. You can also use the mobile app itself to take a picture of a receipt that you can attach to a transaction in QuickBooks Online. Finally, to learn more, strongly recommend to go to the Learn and Support Center for QuickBooks Online Global. You can search it right from the QuickBooks Online website uh, or go into quickbooks.intuit.com forward slash global forward slash learn hyphen and hyphen support. You will find tons of useful information such as community forums, helpful articles, business advice articles, and you can even download a PDF guide that will walk you step by step on how to use everything in, inside QuickBooks Online for free. Thank you very much for attending this presentation and I hope you love QuickBooks Online as much as I do.